Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Sapphire G Pro graphics card. If you've never heard of it, don't worry because despite spending the last eight or nine years finding and testing various hardware, the 6200 here is new to me as well. As per usual, whenever I see a graphics card that I've never heard of or had any experience with before, I have to buy it. And that's exactly what's happened here. With six mini display ports, four gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM, tiny sub 50 watt power consumption and support for up to six 4K screens, this card was designed for use in commercial and professional environments like conference rooms, hotels and medical centers. I wonder if this is the sort of thing that powers those multiple menu screens in fast food restaurants as well. I'm getting distracted. So it's probably obvious by now that this sort of card isn't meant for gaming, but this isn't random professional work environment hardware testing in HD now, is it? So we're going to see if we can actually play some games. That four gigabytes of VRAM might really help out. Interestingly, Swapping out my 6700 XT for this card in my i5 system without uninstalling the Radeon software meant that this thing was picked up by Device Manager straight away as an R7 250. The R7 250 was an entry level card launched in 2013. There were a couple of 4GB versions available but it was mostly a 1 or 2GB GPU. I believe the 4GB versions also used DDR3 memory which is slower than the GDDR5 that this uses. Games will definitely make use of this extra VRAM though the card still offers pretty poor performance when it comes to gaming at least when you consider that these things aren't cheap. Professional cards often carry a premium price tag even if they are only comparable to low-end traditional desktop counterparts. With that said, it is still possible to squeeze a half-decent gaming experience out of the 6200 when we make some pretty big visual sacrifices. Black Ops Cold War at 50% of 1080p ran with just over 40 frames per second with a few little freezes which are responsible for the percentile figures. Can you see what's going on through the pixels? Sort of. Would this be considered playable in a competitive environment? Probably not. This is however still more fun than staring at a boring performance analysis chart on a multi-display setup at a business conference, which is what a huge percentage of 6200s in existence are probably powering right now. Some titles like Grand Theft Auto 5 will even run at close to 60 FPS at 1080p. Here I'm using the high texture settings but everything else is set to normal and FXAA is on. Because of the extra VRAM this card is also capable of recording game footage internally using the built in AMD Relive software without any loss to performance. Because of this what you are seeing here is exactly what you'll get if you slapped one of these low power single slot solutions inside your desktop PC. The card also stays very cool as well despite the small single fan. The Witcher 3 is still what I'd consider a system intensive title and has always pushed lower end and entry level cards to their limits. The G Pro 6200 or R7 250 I guess is no exception with the game just about running at 30 frames per second with 900p resolution and the low settings. Both the graphical and post processing options were set to their respective lowest with any hairworks options switched off. So despite the extra VRAM it doesn't always help. No amount of memory will ever save a graphics card if said card is just too weak to handle certain games anyway. Where that memory will help is in situations where the G Pro is being used as intended. In Red Dead Redemption 2 we had an interesting issue to combat. The game said we had absolutely no VRAM to work with, which I found quite funny, so I had to set the graphical options manually from the settings file in my documents. Everything set to low is definitely the best option, but the game still won't really be playable. Now a lot of the time when I test cards like this, I go into it knowing that the performance won't necessarily be very good. Videos featuring cards I've never heard of are usually all about curiosity. To me, working out what a card is, is the interesting part. Part. 
I never knew this was basically a professional version of an R7250 and there's nothing that would have told me that until I put this card in the test system. If we talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 a little more, the game actually runs the same with the ultra textures as it does with the low textures. In both cases performance is poor but it's nice to know that the ultra textures can be used without any additional frame rate sacrifices. I'd recommend no lower than high textures here anyway as they can look very muddy and low quality even at medium. The recently released to PC Days Gone surprised me once again. Optimization for this PS4 port seems to be quite good at least from what I've seen and the game will even run with an entry level card like this one. Sure we've had to make a huge sacrifice to resolution here, 50% of 1920 by 1080 but doing the same in other games won't be enough to see plus 30 FPS even with low quality presets. I've said it before but I really enjoy this game, I'm currently playing through it on PS5 but I'd recommend it on all of its available platforms. Again we're seeing at least 2GB of VRAM being utilised here so I think that we're getting more performance than we would from a standard 250 especially a 1 gig GDDR5 card which may struggle to run games like this with even lower resolution settings. Finally, and I really didn't know why I bothered, here is Cyberpunk 2077. Now as you can imagine, no amount of graphical tweaking will get this playable, but you might be able to scrape 30 FPS occasionally at 50% of 720p instead of 1080p. At that point though, I think the game would be pretty unplayable because it would be really hard to see what's going on, but there we have it. The Sapphire G Pro 6200 is a professional or commercial card used in multi-monitor scenarios and when it comes to gaming, well as a lot of you probably knew as soon as you saw this thing, well it really isn't that good. The problem I have with this thing isn't its actual gaming performance because it was never intended for said purpose, but it's the fact that it is really expensive. Again, I guess you could say that that's because it's a professional level card and there always seems to be a hefty premium on cards like that. If we look at it from a solely gaming point of view, just as gamers, then it makes no sense because you are paying a huge premium for a card that isn't going to offer you any better performance than an entry level R7 series GPU. What I'm saying is the R7 250 is probably going to struggle in a lot of games anyway, and if you were spending £200 or dollars on a card like this, first of all you shouldn't be, and second of all there are a lot um, more capable options out there even with the current GPU climate. That seems to be the sort of price point that 1050 Ti's are going for these days. At the moment who knows where the price will go next. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed figuring out what this card is alongside me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know if you've ever owned one of these of course and uh, hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.